Welcome to the Seismic Ceiling Installer video. We're going to focus on how to install Seismic DEF ceiling installations, code requirements, and Armstrong's Seismic RX tested solutions that achieve DEF performance for a faster, easier, and better DEF installation experience. IBC's code requirements in DEF installations call for a two inch wall molding, which allows for three quarter inch T movement plus stabilizer bars to prevent the spread of main beams and cross tees at the perimeters. Now, instead of installing two inch wall molding, let's follow Seismic RX guidelines and install standard 7 8 inch wall molding by attaching to studs on 16 or 24 inch centers. But wait, why are there two angle widths here? Item 7850 is Armstrong's new seismic wall angle that's sized 7 eighths of an inch by an inch and an eighth. To meet code and allow for 3 quarter inch T movement on 7 eighths inch molding, your T can only sit on the eighth inch flange, thereby leaving 3 quarter inch T movement on your two float walls. With 7850, we're giving you an extra quarter inch for your T to lay on float walls while still meeting code. For your two perpendicular fixed walls, your tees will be cut tight to the wall regardless of angle width. On float walls, how do you cut border tees precisely to the required tee length? For 7 8 inch angle, butt your override flange to the angle's edge. This way your end detail will not mar the wall. Cut just shy of the midpoint. If you're using item 7850, you can cut to the midpoint or even a 16th inch past. Now remember, if you switch over to our new 7850 angle, your T can extend a quarter inch beyond the hem for a little more breathing room while still leaving three quarter inch float clearance. Seismic RX allows us to eliminate two inch wall angle and stabilizer bars as long as you use the Burke 2 or beam end retaining clip. The clip slips between the angle and the wall and will ultimately be screwed to the vertical angle once your grid is square. A framing screw placed into the center of this elongated slot allows the T to move 3 quarter inch forwards or backwards in a seismic event. For your two perpendicular fixed T walls, but your flange override to the angle as before, then cut to the far edge on the opposite side. If you are using 7850, adjust for the angle's extra quarter inch. Your T should be fully rested on the angle while gently touching the vertical hem of the angle. These fixed T placements are by code, traditionally pop riveted into place. But who wants to see pop rivets? With the Seismic RX, there is approval for using the Burke 2 for fixed T locations, provided you install a framing screw through the locking circular hole as shown here. Remember, both float walls and fixed walls require screws through the Burke into the wall angle. Now, about wires. California code requires that all wires be tied with three wire wraps that occur within an inch and a half of each other. It helps if you bend the wire up to make a handle to grab as you perform these tight wraps. This is a good tight California wrap. IBC code gives you a little more breathing room with three to four wire wraps in three inches. Let's move on now to how Seismic RX simplifies seismic ceiling separation joint construction, plus perimeter wire requirements, compression post placements, and single T installation at 2x4 light fixtures. First, perimeter wires. Well, you still have to install those as you would traditionally per code. In Seismic DEF, Install a perimeter hanger wire to the main tees or cross tees no more than 8 inches from the wall. It is permissible to attach wire to a wall stud, 
provided you tie the tee as close to the wall as possible while conforming to one in six plumb wire drop requirements. When installing two x four light fixture openings, it is important in seismic areas to secure all unopposed cross tee locations. The STAC clip is a seismically tested and approved solution for securing any unopposed stab cross tees typically found at fixture locations or increasingly popular in staggered grid layouts. After seismically bracing your grid every 144 square feet, if your installation is in a large open area, you will need to install seismic separation joints every 2,500 square feet per code requirements. Seismic RX separation joints make this installation process faster, easier, and better than traditional separation joint construction. To allow for three quarter inch main T expansion every 2,500 square feet, you will need to cut three quarters of an inch out at the main beam splice. Make your mark where you will cut three quarters of an inch out at the splice. Make sure not to cut off the pre-punched hole right here. As you can see, the cut is not that difficult. You just need to take your time and be precise. You only want to cut out your grid after you have braced with compression posts every 144 square feet. This will keep your grid square as you cut it out for your seismic separation joints. If you made your cuts right, you should have three-quarter inch clearance between both main tees now. To cover up that three-quarter inch gap, Seismic RX provides the ES4 15 16 inch expansion sleeve, which gives a nice uninterrupted 15 16 inch visual at your three-quarter inch separation joint. We make sleeves for whatever grid you're installing. Here are the items and numbers. To secure both mains back together, we install the SJMR15 or Seismic Joint Main Runner for 15 16 grid. We also have the SJMR09 for 9 16 inch grid systems. The SJMR clip has pre positioned holes that will line up with factory pre positioned holes in the main runners. Make sure to leave the indexing nib or alignment hole free and clear. As long as this hole is open and clear, you are assured of being lined up correctly. In this 10,000 square foot RCP example, we have now secured all main runner splices with the Seismic RX separation joint. Now, we have to secure all cross T intersections running perpendicularly to the main runner separation at the 2500 square foot mark. So, moving from the main separation joint over to the first cross T intersection, we need to first cut the opposing cross T's from each other. We will secure them back to each other with the SJC or Seismic Joint Cross T clip. We manufacture a clip set for interlude and silhouette with their square bulbs and a peak form set for prelude and superfine. After locking the clips together, secure with a C-clamp and place a sharp point framing screw at the indent mark. Once secured on both sides of the intersection, both cross tees on either side of the main will have three quarter inches of movement in a seismic event. Remember, this main runner and cross tee seismic RX separation joint construction only needs to occur when isolating 2,500 square foot blocks in large continuous ceiling installations. There's no more need to isolate these 2,500 square foot blocks with costly soffit construction or unsightly separation joints pop riveted together with C-channel and fascia molding. Seismic RX really simplifies the separation joint process and looks better too. Now, let's talk about construction posts, how you construct them, and with what frequencies they are required. Basically, Compression posts occur every 144 square feet across a ceiling plane. 
If your room is less than 144 square feet, you shouldn't need to use a post. Starting out at your first corner, your first compression post cannot exceed six foot by six foot coming out of the corner and needs to fall at a main T to cross T intersection. After the installation of your first corner posts, you will locate additional posts every 12 feet in both directions throughout the remainder of your space. Make sure you're only screwing the post to the bulb of the grid, leaving the hanger wire holes open for tying your four-way splay wires. After your compression post is installed, you will need to install four 12-gauge splay wires equally arrayed in four directions from the post to structure. These diagonal wires can be no greater than 45 degrees. Each wire needs to be within two inches of the intersection and tight with no slack in it at all. After coming off your first corner with your first post, you will need to position another post every 12 feet in two directions along your two axes. The top of your post will be secured by shooting or drilling and anchoring to concrete or steel structure. In this studio setting, we are not focusing on how to attach to structure in this installed example. I want to emphasize again, if you're installing Seismic RX separation joints, which we reviewed earlier, only install those separation joints after you have installed all your seismic compression posts every 144 square feet. Thanks for watching the Seismic DEF ceiling installer video. For seismic training, seismic shop drawings, or seismic questions, reach out to your regional Armstrong installation specialist for a faster, easier, and better job site experience.